Welcome to another economics topic video and this is a special edition. Uh, we're going to show you 10 economics charts from the UK economy uh, in a multiple choice question format. And the challenge for you is to try to identify the chart. We've selected each uh, in particular because there's a special economic relevance to each of the data charts shown. So good luck, have a go. Let's see how many of these 10 economics charts you can recognise along the way. Here's the first one. Identify the UK economic data contained in this chart. Uh, we're looking at the orange, the deep orange data. The blue line shows regular pay growth as a percentage. What does the orange line show? Is it consumer price inflation, the household savings ratio, the unemployment rate, or the mortgage interest rate? Press the pause button, have a think about the data, and then press play when you want the answer. So what does chart one show? Well, the correct answer is... C, it shows the unemployment rate in the UK. Notice for the exam how unemployment has fallen in the UK from just over 8% in 2011, now heading, to, heading towards 4% of the labour force. So there's been quite a substantial fall in unemployment over the last six years. The unemployment rate indeed has halved, yet the growth of pay is relatively stable at around 2%. Key question here, I suppose, is how much further can unemployment fall in the UK before wage inflation starts to pick up? Let's move on to chart number two. Identify the UK data contained in this chart. Now, this chart is an index using quarter four 2007 as the base value. So we're looking for you to choose A, B, C or D, which index is being shown here. Press the pause button, have a go at the data and then... Press play when you want the answer. OK, the correct answer to question two is it is an index of output per person. It's an index of productivity in the UK. And I suppose the crucial point is that productivity did fall in the early stages of the last recession, but has been very slow to recover. This is sometimes called the productivity puzzle. Why is it, for example, that output per person in the UK has risen so slowly in recent times Indeed, it's barely above the level it was in 2007. Question number three, chart number three. Here we go. Identify the UK economic data contained in this chart. Is it government spending? Is it household consumption? Is it government debt? Is it household debt? The data in the chart this time is expressed as a percentage of GDP. What do you think for chart three? Have a go. OK, what do you think for chart three? The data is expressed as a share of GDP. The correct answer is C. It's government debt as a share of national output. Significant rise in government debt as the economy went into the last recession, in part because the, the government was borrowing a huge amount more. Budget deficit peaked at over 10% of GDP. And also, of course, the bailouts of some financial organisations, the nationalisation of a number of banks that were suffering badly as a result of the global financial crisis. Debt has continued to rise in recent times, uh, although it looks as if the government debt to GDP ratio is stabilising at around 85% of national income. How are we doing so far? Let's move on to chart number four. Identify the UK data contained in this chart. Now you just have a number here. What do you think? A, B, C or D for this chart? OK, the correct answer for chart four is A, it's a measure of the Gini coefficient. The Gini coefficient is one way that we measure the scale of income inequality in a country. It can be measured either from 0 to 1, where 1 is perfect inequality, or from 0 to 100 if you express it as a, as, as a base level there. And you can see that the Gini coefficient, this is actually for disposable income has actually been gently falling in recent times. It, it rose very sharply during the late 70s and the 1980s. But the, the Gini coefficient for the UK has been, overall, for disposable income, falling gently over recent years. Let's move on to chart five. Identify the economic data contained in this chart. The data here is thousands per quarter. So a quarter is three months. Thousands per quarter. Is it new house, new houses completed? 
Is it new business startups? Is it net inward migration? Is it net mortgage defaults? Press the pause button, have a go, and uh, press play when you want the answer. And the right answer to chart five is C, it shows net inward migration, which four or five years ago was rising towards over 300,000 per quarter, so over effectively over a million per year, well over a million per year. And if that figure has come down since the summer of 2016, perhaps in response to the Brexit referendum result. So the net migration figure, that's the balance of people coming into the UK, minus people leaving the UK, that figure is now below 250,000 per quarter. And that, of course, is people from EU countries and non-EU countries as well. OK, well, halfway through, how are we doing? Let's do another five economic charts. Here we go, question number six. Identify the economic data contained in this chart. Now, crucially, the data is a percentage of people aged 16 to 64 in the UK. So what do we think for chart six? The percentage of people aged 16 to 64 in the UK. Is it people who are members of a trade union? Is it people who are self-employed? Is it people who are economically inactive? Or is it people who rent a home? Instead of buying a home, they rent a home. Now the figures come down from about 24% down to about 21% over the, over this period. What do you think for chart number six? Okay, the answer to chart number six is the economically inactive population. This is the percentage of people of working age who are not either in work or actively searching for work. And that figure has come down. It's still high, though. It's still over 20% uh, of the working age population. Perhaps people are chronically ill, or perhaps they're looking after an elderly relative. Perhaps they're still in full-time education and training, or perhaps they've taken early retirement. Perhaps they've been unemployed for a long period of time and have effectively given up the search for work. So the economically inactive population is a, is a significant supply-side indicator in the labour market, what percentage of people are not active in the labour market. Here's chart seven. Identify the data contained in this chart. Now this chart is a percentage of GDP, which may help you. Is it A, the fiscal deficit? B, the current account deficit? C, government capital investment spending? Or D, research and development spending by UK firms? All of this data expresses a share of GDP. What do you think for chart Number seven. Have a go. And the correct answer to chart number seven is, did you get it right? It's the fiscal deficit, the size of the budget deficit for the UK. The last time we ran a surplus was in the year 2000-2001. Since then, the UK government has run a budget deficit, spending more than it's taking in in tax revenues. The deficit peaked at just over 10% of GDP in 2009-2010. During the last recession, it has come down, albeit steadily, was 2.3% in 2016, 2017. Three more charts to go in our quiz. Here we go. Chart 8. Identify the economic data contained in this chart. Now, this chart is measured as a percentage of disposable income, and it's quarterly data. So it's the data moving from every three-month period onwards. Is it spending on transport? Is it spending on food and drink? Is it household credit card debt? Is it the household savings ratio? Press the pause button. What do you think for chart eight? The correct answer for chart eight is D. It's the household savings ratio, the percentage of people's disposable income that is saved. Crucially, from the point of the context of the exam, notice how the figure has come down from a high level. During the last recession, people were saving nearly 10% of their income perhaps because they had low consumer confidence, they were saving for precautionary reasons or perhaps to pay off some debt. That figure has fallen quite sharply in the last two or three years to a low level, a level below 6% of disposable income. So households are saving less as a share of their disposable income. Lots of reasons for that. Perhaps one of the reasons is that interest rates on savings have been very low, indeed less than inflation. So in real terms, the interest rate may have been negative. And also, of course, there's been a rise in household borrowing on credit cards and uh, increase in household debt, for example, to purchase vehicles. If you borrow money, 
Uh, borrowing money counts as dis saving. It brings down the savings ratio. Two more charts to go. Chart nine, identify the UK data shown in this chart. There's one bit of data showing the quarter on quarter change. There's one bit of data showing the quarter on quarter uh, percentage change quarter on quarter. What is being shown here? Is it the growth of exports? Is it the growth of investment? Is it the growth of real GDP? Is it the growth of house prices? Have a go at chart nine. And the answer to chart nine is C, it's the growth of real GDP. So this basically shows the economic cycle, the growth rate of the economy. So you can see the recession in 2008, 2009. We had one, two, three, four, five quarters of negative growth. Uh, we had occasional little dips in growth in 2012, but not enough for a recession. You need two successive quarters of negative growth. And notice if you follow the orange line that the rate of growth of the economy is slowing down and has been slowing down uh, since about 2015. It's now a little bit below 2%. The British economy grew by 1.8% in 2017. Here's our last chart, chart number 10. Identify the UK data shown in this chart. What do we think for this one? Percentage change. Is it house price inflation? Is it consumer price inflation? Is it the growth in consumer credit? Is it the growth in mortgage lending? Okay, the correct answer to our final chart is B, it's consumer price inflation. It shows the rate of inflation, the 12 month percentage change in consumer prices, which of course tries to track changes in the cost of living for an average family. We came quite close to deflation in 2015. Can you see the rate of inflation falling below zero? Since then, inflation has picked up and reached just over 3% in the last latter stages of last year, in part because the pound had fallen quite sharply against the dollar, against the euro, causing import prices to, to rise. Inflation is now falling back towards the Bank of England's target for inflation of 2%. Well, how did you get on? 10 charts. I reckon if you got more than half of those right, you're doing really well and you've got a really good understanding of some of the key data charts that oftentimes find their way into economics exams. Thank you.